is strangely beautiful. Mum's atelier. Dad sealed it soon after she died. He probably couldn't bear the idea of removing any of her belongings. My lord, we all hope your work was well received at the conference and look forward to your return. As is so often the case with these missives, I wanted to call your attention to an incident involving our little angel. It seems that Lara has been the subject of some ridicule amongst the other girls at school. From what I can gather, some of the other young ladies were teasing her for being too much of a tomboy. You know how Lara can get when pushed into a corner. Let's just say they won't be bothering her again. But I do think their words have had an effect. I believe Lara has been missing her mother lately. She's begun to worry that she isn't like the other girls. And having grown up with only a father, it shouldn't come as a surprise that she has trouble relating to them. I wonder if this new friend of yours, Anna, is it? Perhaps she might prove a welcome influence. It might be worth bringing her to the manor to meet Lara. In any case, I'll let you decide the proper time to do that. Please travel home safely. Yours, Winston. as she left it. I stood up to my family's criticism, stood in defense of Richard and our love. But as my new life began in Croft Manor, doubt set in. How could love flourish in these cavernous halls and endless passageways? Had I made a terrible mistake? I have never been more delighted to be wrong. Richard welcomed me to the manor, my new home, with a game. It was a clue, written in jumbled words from five different languages, but it pointed the way forward. The next clue was a seemingly blank piece of parchment in the kitchen, where the heat of a candle revealed a message written in lemon juice. I followed each step, grinning like a child as I solved his riddles and chased the trail to its end. A white cloth stretched out on the lawn where a picnic was laid out. <laughs> we laughed and ate, and my doubt vanished with the last of the morning mist. Love can and will endure. I don't have any memory of this. I wish I could remember doing this. Mum died too young. Mum with me as a baby. I've never seen this. Hard to believe I was ever that small. Lara arrived tonight, though not without a bit of drama, but all is well. She's a healthy, beautiful baby. I've never seen Richard so happy. I'm sure he'll be celebrating with his favourite whiskey tonight. It's calm and peaceful now. Just the gentle sound of the rain and the small, sleeping breaths of this new life I hold in my arms. Lara, Lara Croft, my Darling daughter, it's hard to put into words this feeling I have. We share a connection, 
something I never expected. A love so powerful and pure. Someday you'll feel it too. No matter where you go or where you find your place in this world, we will always have this connection. This was for a show in London of Mum's work. What I wouldn't give to see this today. Hmm, it says here, Amelia Croft plans to show her work in New York. I wonder what happened with that. You've almost got it, darling. Here. Let me show you. Like this, see? <laughs> well done, Laura. Well done. I wonder how my life would have been different had she lived. Mum's paintings. Which one was Dad's favorite? I returned home this afternoon to collect the last of my paintings. I suppose I should say I returned to my family's home. Atlas was there, in one of his foul moods, and even as he dripped venom for Richard with his cruel barbs, I could only laugh. To think that I once listened to my bitter brother in matters of my own happiness. My dismissal only served to infuriate him more. I left him there in father's study, muttering to himself, on the drive back, as Winston took a longer route through the country, I looked through my paintings. Richard's favourite one among them, a simple abstract with blocks of red. I smiled, thinking about giving it to him. I was happy, and I was going home. Hmm, blocks of red. Dad's favourite painting. Maybe something about that painting will help me figure out the combination. I'm glad I still have so much of Mum's work. With Amelia gone, the manor is a different place. A dimness pervades, a quiet I can't stand. Even though Lara is too young to understand what has happened, she also senses the change. She's asked after her mother only once, and I'm afraid my reaction must have terrified her. I will need Winston more than ever these next few months to help look after her. I never quite realized how much grief can consume a man. But I am utterly consumed. I know I can't escape the pain, but I will try my damnedest to avoid it. I will seal the West Wing for as long as I live in this place. It will remain exactly as Amelia left it. Perhaps someday Lara can find her own answers there. I believe it took this trip to push me over the edge. I've been able to see Richard in his element, seeing... Amelia would not have approved. That alone should have been the end of it. But I am, as God made me, a stubborn fool. I locked all the West Wing's doors, and I shall not open them again until either my life or my obstinacy comes to an end. The night before, Roth told me I would someday change my mind. Like a broken arm cast in plaster, he said. The wound would heal, and we would someday shed the bandages to be whole again. The metaphor made me furious. The clumsy way he cast our loss off as nothing more than an inconvenience. There is wisdom in his rough words, but 
I've done what I must. Perhaps one day, Lara will throw back the doors to let the sun shine in again. Maybe she will find her own sense of peace in this place. At least that old thing still works. I am bursting with pride. Amelia is with child. It is amazing how everything in life can change with such a simple event. Obviously, we don't know the gender, but already we've discussed possible names. Perhaps Benjamin, after my grandfather, or maybe Griffin. He was more infamous a Croft than even me. No, Amelia wouldn't have it. Besides, she's certain it's a girl. She favours a, a classic such as Scarlet or Kate, though I've made some headway with Lara. A subtle nod to the sun god Ra, and our days in Egypt, where certainly this child was conceived. I find myself thinking about this new life we've created, of how much she might be like us. For all my research into myths of immortality, I may have ignored the most obvious answer to the questions that plague me. We live on through our progeny, our genes, DNA, experiences, passed through the generations. Perhaps this is the simple truth of eternal life, and I've just been too stubborn to accept it. Dad may have discovered the secret to immortality without even knowing it. Mum's wedding ring. I always wondered what happened to it. The inscription is faded. After everything Atlas has done, how could you tell him about the expedition? It's just all been too much. I needed to talk to someone. He's still my brother. I don't trust him. You don't have to, Richard. But please, trust me. I'm sorry, my dear, but I know him. He'll take it to the papers. The investors will pull out. Then go. Without me. Tonight. I will take care of Atlas. And then meet you in Tibet next week. I was so young, but I still remember that terrible argument. It wasn't always an easy road for my parents. I think this was Dad's pocket watch. Hmm, looks like it stopped precisely at midnight. This is Dad. I suppose it's a family tradition, but I can't imagine having one of these made of me. My mother's perfume. The smell. So familiar. I can almost remember her. Hmm. <laughs> Mum, on her wedding day. She looks so beautiful. There's a date. October something. Damn, the number is faded. The anniversary was in October. But which day? Oh, I can't believe I don't know this. There's got to be another clue somewhere. I remember this. Dad gave it to Mum on her birthday. October 13th, Mum's birthday. Hmm, pretty sure my parents were married in October. I think it was close to her birthday. Okay, back to the study to open that safe. Dad, what do you keep in there? Nothing too important, Lara. Estate business and such. If it's not important, then why bother putting it in a safe? I should know better than to try and pull one over on you. <laughs> there is something important in here. And it's for you, should you need it someday. Well, let's hope you came through for me, Dad. 
Okay, found all the clues. Let's see if I can figure this out. That will help. It makes me happy to know that Dad kept us safe. No, that's not what I'm looking for. I am numb. It is taking all my willpower to hold back the overwhelming grief. Amelia's plane crashed in the mountains. She died alone in the snow waiting for me to find her. Oh God, not her, not now. I cannot accept it. Life without her is too painful to imagine. I know what must be done. And I am resolved. I'm going to bring her back. Perhaps this is why I am here. Perhaps this is fate. A test of my faith in the truth I've sought for so long. Roth will fight me on this, but I can't face Lara. I can't look into her eyes unless I try. I must try to bring Amelia back. The monks are preparing the elixir now, and then we will see if all my years of hunting this truth was for naught. Dad, what did you do? Dad's sequel to his first book on immortality. He never got a chance to publish it. Handwritten. This is the only copy. Damn, this isn't it either. I was certain there had to be a will in here. Wait, what's that? Hmm, a blank page. Dad must have left this for me. It has to be important. hidden message. What are these strange marks? They have to be some kind of clue. I remember this now. Each district in ancient Egypt had a symbol and a number. I always preferred these symbols to the actual number hieroglyphs. 